so much fun. Bowler Motorsport was set up in 1985 and is now to Land Rover what Manti Racing is to Porsche. You might remember it from such vehicles as the Wildcat, Nemesis and Bulldog. Anyway, this is their first take on the new Defender. It's designed to compete in the One Make Defender Challenge Rally Championship, which returns next year, with seven rounds tackling a mixture of traditional stage rallies and more extreme hill rallies. It's a first rung on the ladder for those that dream of taking on the Dakar. Of course, motorsport isn't cheap, and a Defender Challenge car with entry to the championship and event support will cost £99,500. But the vehicle you're getting is rather more than just a P300 Defender 90 with a set of decals. So let's have a look at some of the changes. Starting with cooling around the front, because I think this is quite clever because it's one of those things if you don't know your new Defenders that well, you'd think this was, well, basically a standard front, but actually they've, they've taken a huge amount away just to get more air in there and down there. And in fact, a lot of the work's gone on behind it. So you can see sort of some of the tubing beside, and I was saying, actually, if you ripped all this off, it'd probably look pretty cool with that tubing in there. And they've engineered it so that if in the future they want to add more coolers in there, more rads in there, they can do that. Moving around here, they've adapted these because they've got the specific laser lights in there, just so you can light up the um, trails and hill rallies and stuff like that. You really need to see the ground ahead of you. And they're often night stages. I remember those particularly well from doing that. Here, those easy to replace because that's obviously the sort of part that's going to get knocked pretty easily. Moving down the side here, new wheels, obviously new tyres as well. These are an 18 inch wheel and whereas the, the standard 18 inch wheels they are rated up to about a tonne in terms of load, these are uh, 1.25 tonnes in terms of their load rating up here. I think these are really cool. They sort of remind me of the um, or oh, the vortex generators, weren't they, on that Evo 10 that they did. Um, but these are washer fluids, so just as you're coming through, sort of, you know, it's mud or dust or whatever, massive great squirt of um, washer fluid onto the screen to clear that. Moving down to here, the snorkel, which everyone thinks is for wading. It's actually really, um, it's more to do with dust, to be honest, um, so that when it's, it's really dusty, you're not getting all that getting sucked into the engine. Moving down the side here, one of the big changes, doors, because normally they would go all the way down there, but they've taken 71 mil off the bottom of these. And that is to allow them to, well, take all this protection and wrap it up around the sills here. So you've got a huge amount of underbody protection, um, six mil aluminium plate underneath there and some extra bracing as well. You've got these caps to then just make it look yeah, a bit more, a bit neater. These parts, they're from the official sort of options from you can get for a, a normal Defender anyway. Do the job, so they've kept those. This one hasn't actually got it, but it will get um, carbon, you know, get Kevlar liners in the arches for this, just for that extra bit of protection. We've also got the big mud flaps here, and you can see the little aluminum braces. The idea being, it's a bit like um, anybody that rides a, a bicycle, you get you want the, the hanger for the rear derailleur to break, not the frame. So that's kind of the idea behind that. Moving further around here, well, at the back, we've got this up here, which is a nice new part. And they're thinking sort of eventually you might be able to buy some of these things if you've, you've got a Defender, regardless of whether you want to go rallying or not, you might fancy one of those. And that's got the extra lighting up there as well, just so if you're coming back down a hill, for example, reversing out of some trouble, something I have had to do in the past, then you've got the extra light just there as well. Inside, there is a huge FIA roll cage that has been integrated with the body and links the suspension mounts. They've also designed the cage to carry the spare wheel, and either side of that, you can see the rear reservoirs for the bespoke Fox dampers. Up front, there are the bucket seats and harnesses that you'd expect, but the whole Defender dash has also been moved closer to the driver to allow the bracing behind and also place the gear selector within easy reach. This is still a pre-production prototype, but it's an intriguing mix of stripped-out competition car and original Defender fixtures and fittings. Right, enough about the ingredients, what's it like to drive? Now, I drove the old Defender Challenge car, and I cannot emphasize enough just what a different experience this is. <laughs> For a start, there's no manual box. Instead, we've got the big paddle here, so very WRC style. 
pull it towards you to go up a gear. Whoa. <laughs> I love that jump. <laughs> and then just push it away from you to go back down the gears. The old Defender was, well, frankly, pretty terrifying in a lot of respects because, well, if you slid it, you needed to keep it extremely neat because it would slide, but you might catch the slide, but you probably wouldn't get the lock off again because there was so much steering lock needed. This is a whole other world of precise. It might not look it initially, but trust me, it is. It is obviously a curious thing to drive in many ways because you are up high and you feel pretty remote compared to certainly other types of rally car. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. Once you do, it is surprisingly drivable. This is so much more precise. You can actually chuck it around. It's a really cool little stage that we're on here today. There's a bit of everything because that's what you'll get in the Defender Challenge Championship. You get everything from sort of traditional rally stages to then the hill rallies, which have sort of flat out forest fire roads. And then you'll get kind of really quite technical stuff on those as well, which can be sort of down to more traditional off-roading. So this is a really nice sort of test of it being both fast, but also they're, well, much rougher than you'd ever get generally with a normal rally stage. It's extraordinary, just the capability, the liberties that you can take with this crawling all over apexes and that sort of thing. Because they're trying to make this really, really as affordable as possible, the engine and gearbox are, well, standard. So we've got 296 brake horsepower, 295 pounds foot of torque. You do need to keep the engine really revving. You can't just rely on the torque with this. It does feel actually surprisingly habitable in here. I mean, obviously aircon and stuff like that on a day like today is really good to have. So yeah, it's much more comfortable. It lands super well over that jump. It really soaks it up. We've got these Fox dampers in here. And they just give you a huge amount of confidence. But then you get onto the tarmac here and actually it's still really well supported. I mean, you shouldn't be able to do that. It just stays really nice. In fact, at that point where the old would have just sort of started really trying to tip over, this is so nicely supported. The fact that it is so much easier to drive and so much more habitable to spend a few days in should significantly smooth the learning curve for those competing for the first time. Although there are obviously none of the terrain modes and aids from the donor car, you could, shock horror, even leave it to shuffle the gears itself to start with. After all, there is quite a lot to get to grips with in a hill rally, particularly as there are no pace notes and you might be driving some of it at night. The thing I love about so this and, well, hill rallies in general, is that they feel like a proper adventure. <laughs> I love the incongruity of jumping something like this and sliding it around. <laughs> so much fun. And it is fun. I think that's, that's the biggest thing to get across. Two of you in here, on a bit of an adventure. The old Defender Challenge was the most, the most I've ever laughed, I think, whilst doing motorsport. And to me, that's a pretty good thing. There are a few things I've got from today. One is that I'm really pleased to see how Bowler still exists, that it's still true to the Bowler that I know. When Drew Bowler passed away, it was, it was extremely sad. He was just one of the loveliest people you were ever likely to meet. Very quietly spoken, immensely talented. 
And I, I wonder what would become of the company. So it's really lovely to see so many people still involved with it and it's still having that independence despite the fact it's been bought by JLR. Like the standard showroom Defender, Bowler's new Defender Challenge car is in many respects a world away from the old incarnation. Some will bemoan a reduction in the skills required with only two pedals to operate, but for novices it will be much more approachable. And for those with more experience, it is ultimately faster and more rewarding on the limit. It also still feels very serious, like something that really could take you on adventures further afield. Feeding those Dakar dreams. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you haven't already, then please do think about subscribing to the channel. We're trying to hit a million subscribers just as soon as possible. And if you're in the mood for a bit more off-road stuff, why not check out our film on the Morgan CXT? It has to be seen to be believed. <laughs>